Good evening everybody. I hope you can join me tonight. Um, if not, I hope you can catch up in the next few days and uh, listen to this weekly Facebook Live that I've been doing since January. I've done this nearly every week since um, beginning or early part of January on a Tuesday night at six o'clock. So if you don't see this live tonight, do look out for this next week at 6 p.m. on a Tuesday night. So today I thought I would focus on um, on hydration because so much time we talk about foods and what we need to eat for good health and I think we tend to overlook the hydration aspect um, but before I get into that I hope you're all doing well you're all feeling okay you're all coping all right at the moment um, we're now into week four I don't need to say that really in terms of our sort of the massive impact it's had on our lives. So I hope you're all feeling okay in these difficult times. Um, I'm sort of getting to the point now, look, I've hacked at my own hair, cut my own fringe. I know that's not the most essential thing in the world to be telling you right now, but needs must. And uh, we're all just getting by the best we can, aren't we? So hope you're all fine. Um, do let me know if there's different topics you'd like me to talk about in the coming weeks anything that's on your mind at all, whether it's related to food, your lifestyle, your mental well-being, because as a naturopath, I am trained in looking at the whole holistic mind, body, gut, the whole relationship between all of that and the impact it has on our health. And it's all very much of interest to me, not just solely focused on food. So tonight, um, I thought I'd talk about the importance of our food our liquid, our hydration, our fluid choices, and the impact it has on our health. And I said, you know, there's seven reasons, I've, I've come up with seven reasons why what we choose to drink can have quite a dramatic impact on our health. And so when I look at clients, it's, it's I ask a number of questions about what's being drunk and the time of the drinks, the total volume, the different types of drinks, whether they're sugary drinks, whether they're low sugar and therefore often supplemented with artificial sweeteners um, and the, the types of drinks and fluids because these all can have a really, really important impact on health and often can be a major reason why clients come to me with certain symptoms. Um, and the diet may be pretty good, but it can often be linked to the fluids. So let me go on and explain what I am talking about. So first of all, um, just a little bit of technical stuff. I try to avoid saying too much technical detail, but the first thing I just want to say, oh, and do say hi if you're watching and, um, you know, say hello so I know who's out there tonight. The first thing, a little bit of technical detail, but it's to do with our electrolyte balance. Um, and all I'm talking about here is to do with our certain types of minerals that are known as electrolytes. They affect quite a significant way the um, the way the body works. So if we have too much sodium and we think about all oh, too much sodium in the bloodstream, we think that's not good, not good for our health. But what happens is if we have too much fluid, i.e. we start to really dilute the blood and therefore it weakens the electrolytes. Hi Sylvie, if it weakens the electrolyte balance in the body, this can have quite a dramatic impact on our health. Now, if you were to dramatically drink a huge volume of liquid, like water, thinking that's the right thing to do, that can actually be quite dangerous for health. But typically on day-to-day -day issues, if we upset our electrolyte balance by drinking too much fluid, we, it may actually lead to symptoms like fatigue, it could contribute to headaches, it could contribute to cramping and irritability. They're just sort of quite straightforward symptoms that you may think have nothing to do with fluid intake. Now I know and I still see a lot of posts out there that talk about drinking more and more or they don't define how much should be drunk. They might just say drink more fluid, you need to drink lots of water. And that's such poor advice because it's not telling you how much you actually need to have. So typically in a day for most people who lead a fairly 
moderate activity level lifestyle, the maximum amount of total fluid, this isn't just water, but total fluid that's needed in a day is two litres. That's typically about eight glasses or eight cups, not mug size, and it varies quite a lot when you measure that out. Um, and that's total fluid. So often what you hear is people say, drink more water, or you should be drinking lots of water without considering how many cups of tea and coffee, how many herbal drinks you might have, uh, if you're drinking orange juice, if you're drinking Cokes or something like that. The focus tends to be drinking lots of water is a really right thing and the, the really good thing to do for your health, but that is just so inaccurate and potentially, potentially dangerous to your health. So total fluid intake to not upset your electrolyte balance, which is very, very important for our overall well-being and our health, is about two litres for the average person. One and a half litres if you're not that active, two litres if you're reasonably active, and the more you get into more intense exercise, the more you may need, but it's unlikely that you would ever need more than three litres a day. And those that are more serious athletes will usually add some sort of electrolyte mix to their drinks and that's exactly why they add electrolytes to their to their fluids their water if they're doing intense exercise for long periods of time so that they don't upset that really delicate electrolyte balance with potassium um, and sodium and things like that um so that's my the first thing i just wanted to say because there is so much talk about drinking more and more fluids and it really is not the case at all often it's less not more and it's very important to spread that out over the course of the day so my second reason why we need to think about our fluids is to do with the impact it can have on digestion so if we consume a lot of liquid at the same time that we're eating it can have an impact on diluting our digestive secretions. So the saliva in our mouth contains certain enzymes that start to break down food. So if we're drinking a lot of fluid at the same time as we're eating, then that can uh, wash away, wash away the saliva, wash away those important enzymes that are in the mouth, which starts the breakdown of digestion of our food. And then once food gets to our stomach, that needs to be highly acidic to be breaking down the contents in the stomach, really, really acidic, to be really churning up and breaking down the proteins in our food, uh, in our stomach. And it's in the stomach that's really acidic. So the more fluid we have and consume when we're eating, potentially you, are, you, you could be reducing the acidity that's so important in the stomach. And that has a massive impact on the next stage of digestion in the small intestines as well. So fluid directly, if you drink a lot, can affect the um, ability to be digesting your food. Now, how much should you drink? Um, I've got a glass here. It's quite a large, reasonably sized glass, but we tend to say about 200 milliliters typically you don't need to be measuring it out but an average size glass of water is the right amount to be consuming we don't want to have a completely dry consistency so some fluid is important but it's to make sure you're not drinking so much i do get some clients that say oh you know i think about well, I remember to drink my fluid, I remember to have my water, I want to meet in my meal. And then I have to sort of say, well, actually, that's not necessarily the best thing to be doing, to be drinking a lot when you're eating. The other impact is if you drink tea and coffee, because tea and coffee can actually negatively influence the digestive secretions and have a negative impact on your ability to digest food as well. So it is best to be drinking teas and coffees well away from meal times. Not ideal to have a coffee at the end of a meal. Have a bit of a break before you think about doing that. Um, the thing I'm going to talk about next is linked to that, but not directly. Um, and the reason why we should drink tea and coffee well away from meal times. So um, there are compounds called tannins, uh, things called tannic acid. There are other things as well, like in Coke, uh, we get phosphoric acid, we can get other types of acids. And these, some of these can negatively bind to minerals. So what can happen is if you've got something like tannins from a cup of tea um, and other compounds in coffee, they can bind to our minerals like iron, um, uh, like calcium, 
and zinc and they can bind to them in the gut and then bind to them so they can't be absorbed into the body, into the bloodstream and they get excreted out of the body. So if you drink tea and coffee close to when you're consuming a meal, you may not be taking up and absorbing all those valuable nutrients from your meal. So you could be eating the best quality food um, and if you take supplements, you may be having the best quality supplements. However, if you tend to drink tea or coffee close to the meal time, you may not be able to extract all those minerals from your food. Why do, hi Debbie, why do many fitness trainers encourage water for weight loss? I think they may do that. Um, some people say drink water, don't they, before eating to try and fill yourself up on water. Um, and sometimes I think the they might say drink water to sometimes I think there can be a confusion between thirst and hunger and some people may actually be thirsty when uh, they may think they're hungry when actually they're thirsty so if you're not drinking enough your body may confuse that message and think it's hungry rather than thirsty so it may be a good idea to drink some water but in well in advance, a good half hour, maybe drink you know, good quality of water before you start eating to really determine if you are hungry or not. Um, but I think, Debbie, that may be why. Um, but I do think for some fitness trainers, there is a misunderstanding about how much um, water or fluid intake. In fact, I don't think they consider the total fluid intake. They only think about the water intake. So another reason with regards to those really important tannins um, and digestion and tea and coffee is how they may impact on the absorption of B12. Um, and if we have a lot of fluids with our meal and if we are diluting the acid in our stomach, you may not be able to absorb your B12. We, we need the digestive secretions to be adequately be able to absorb our B12 from our food. So when we're drinking tea and coffee, um, make sure you drink them a good hour ideally more away from your main meals now I know if you do snack I'm not a massive fan of snacking but if you do snack then you're not necessarily going to be able to avoid it but certainly your main meals do try and have your tea and coffee at least an hour either side of your of your meals now the fourth thing I want to talk about is the impact on stress I did mention this last week but if you missed that post I was talking about how food and what we eat and drink can impact our stress levels and our ability to cope with stress. Teas and coffees and alcohol as well are all stimulants and they are going to therefore um, create a stress response in the body. They're called a stimulant, they stimulate our adrenal glands and it's our adrenal glands that produce our stress hormones, which are adrenaline, and secondary one is cortisol. So if we tend to drink a lot of tea and coffee and rely on those a lot during the day, then we may be unnaturally stimulating that stress response, which we don't want to happen. Um, we want to try and keep stress under control. So the more tea and coffee we drink throughout the day, and I'm talking your normal teas and coffees, they can create that stress response, which we don't want to, especially at the moment when we're all feeling a little bit anxious and more stressful. We need to keep our tea and coffee levels as low as we possibly can. Ideally, two cups of tea and coffee a day, maybe three. Um, if you drink significantly more than that, try and find ways to slowly reduce it. Don't try and go cold turkey because you may start getting headaches and you may feel quite irritable to start with. So gently and slowly try and reduce that down each day. Now herbal teas are fantastic because they don't have the stimulatory response in them. But when it comes to drinking them close to mealtime, some of them actually do have quite high levels of tannins in them. Things like um, peppermint tea, for example, has quite a lot of tannins. So again, when we're thinking about herbal teas, not so much with the fruit flavored teas, but the herbal teas, it is best to have them well away from your meals. And green tea, when I ask clients about drinking herbal teas, they'll often say, oh, I do drink green tea. And whilst green tea is known to have some highly beneficial compounds in it it does still contain caffeine 
So it can still have that stimulatory response and does have that stimulatory response. So do be careful with green tea and don't naturally think, well, I'll switch from my black tea and I'll start getting into green tea. The Japanese teas don't have that bitter taste and they're very, very pure. Whereas I think a lot of the cheaper quality green teas over here are not necessarily the best ones to be going for. So if you're going to switch from black tea and coffees and think about herbal teas I would try and choose proper herbal teas the red bush tiktok tea I've talked about rubosh tea is very very natural and doesn't have I don't think it has any tannins or caffeine in it at all um and the other teas herbal teas don't other than green tea don't have the stimulatory effect but they might have the tannins so herbal teas think about having them well away from meal times as well now fluids overall are really important for detoxification um, and really helping the gut so those that don't drink a lot of fluids throughout the day and don't focus more on the hydrating fluids that's your herbal fruit teas plus water um, will and possibly may have an impact on the ability for uh, the regularity of the bowel movements. Um, if we don't drink enough fluids, then the water gets reabsorbed from the colon back into the bloodstream because the brain is, you know, all the sensors in the body is very, very clever and will detect that the body is dehydrated. If it detects the body is dehydrated, it's going to do what it can to hold on to water. It's a natural thing to do, great thing to do. But the way in which it does that is to draw out water from the colon and absorb it back into the bloodstream. And what happens then is it may then cause constipation. It may make those bowel movements difficult to pass. If that's the case for you, then have a think about how much fluid that you're drinking during the day and think about the types of fluid as we've just been discussing. You really, really want to aim for as much fluid as possible coming from the water and hydrating sources with herbal and fruit teas and really not much of your stimulatory tea and coffees and certainly not your... Um, your things like coke as well so you know the one and a half to two liters typically on average is the amount of fluid we need for good bowel movements but we are all unique some will need more and some will need less but do bear in mind that if constipation is one of the things that you suffer from um, and you think your bowel regularity could be better do think about your hydration levels because that water does get taken back out of the blood um, of the colon and back into the bloodstream to help your stop you being dehydrated and of course if we've um, if we are dehydrated one of the things I was taught in my training is that the cell membranes we don't have walls cell walls in our body but our cell membranes which need to be really permeable not only to allow nutrients in but to allow the waste to come out of our cells and again, as we've just been talking about, our body's really clever holding on to water, but our cells need a certain amount of water in them to enable them to carry out all their functions. And what they detect, and what I was taught in my training, is that if, we're, if the body is dehydrated, the cell membranes become a bit hardened, and it makes it much harder for waste to be extracted out of those cells as well as nutrients to get into them so from a detoxification point of view keeping your hydration levels up to get waste out of the cells um, for the lymph fluid which takes the waste from our cells and tissues and eventually drains it back into our bloodstream we need a lot of fluid a lot of hydration to keep the lymph fluid flowing well and then in order to get those toxins which eventually find their way into our gut and into the bowel to be excreted out the body if we want good bowel movements to get those toxins out. So for the whole detoxification process, you know, we need to think about the types of fluids that we're drinking and making sure we get enough each day. Um, the sixth point on my list, I'm conscious of the time, but I've only got seven to go through. The sixth one is to do with sleep. Um, and if we have too many stimulants, tea, coffee, alcohol, close to bedtime, then it has this stimulatory effect and it can impact our blood sugar levels in the night. And if blood sugar levels dip at night, 
then you may get a stimulatory effect happening. And when that happens, it can make you ping you wide awake in the middle of the night. Um, we don't want to be drinking too many fluids close to bedtime because it just might wake you up because you want to go for a wee in the middle of the night. So this is why it's important to be just sipping water um, or herbal teas or fruit teas throughout the day so that we're not drinking too many late in the day and we're not drinking too many at meal times. I try and keep a glass of water on my desk, often for clients who work in offices, not currently, but if they're working in an office, I often say, you know, keep a half litre bottle of water or, you know, have a water bottle on your desk so that you can modify, you can, you can regulate and see how much you're drinking. Some clients now are buying these water bottles that actually have it written on the side how much they're drinking. So it just helps them keep a check when they really trying to focus on this um but i just keep a, try and keep a glass and i go back out to the kitchen fill it up come back to my desk again throughout the day or i keep it in the kitchen and just keep it on the go so when i go to the kitchen i think about having a glass of water when i'm out there and the final thing i just want to talk about is my favorite topic and that's the gut and the gut bacteria but when we're thinking about the types of fluids we're drinking it's important to not only not have sugary fluids, but not to go for low sugar fluids. I've been talking about this with, um, oh, thanks, Sylvie, super information. Thank you. Um, not to go for the low sugar ones because both the sugars and the low sugar sweeteners have a really, really negative impact on our gut bacteria. So we're constantly trying to keep this very, very delicate balance of keeping, making sure we've got high levels of beneficial good bacteria and keeping in check the negative bad bacteria. So this sort of dysbiosis effect that it can have. Now we know sugars feed the bad bacteria, so we don't wanna be having sugary drinks, but equally, it's not good to be going for the sweeteners either. These low sugar sweeteners um, are also known, research, there's a lot of research around this now to show how they disrupt the balance of good and bad bacteria as well as impacting um, on our mental and brain health as well. There's probably a lot more research that needs to be done in this area, but I really advise, in fact, I prefer clients to completely cut out the low sugar artificial sweetener products completely. And if they struggle with hydration and drinking water, just plain water, either flavour water with, I don't know, cucumber, lemon, mint, anything like that. Or as a last resort, I would much rather they have a very, very diluted cordial, which is a sugary cordial, than going for the artificial sweeteners. So those are my seven steps, my seven reasons why we need to think very carefully about our hydration and how it can impact our health in so many ways. But as I said at the start, I think overall, the amount of fluid we need per day is roughly two litres, maybe one and a half if we're not very active. Maybe if we're very, very active, we might get up to two and a half. Depends on our activity levels. The aim is to spread that over the day and to focus more on our hydrating fluids. It doesn't have to be just water. Herbal and fr fruit teas do count towards our hydration levels. Um, but that total fluid level is all our fluid, which includes all our teas and coffees. I'm not gonna mention fizzy drinks because they really should be a no-no. And if you do love them, they should just be a treat. Um, they're one of the worst things you can possibly have. But, um, and fruit juices, I haven't even mentioned fruit juices, but the sugar content in those is just so high, they, they shouldn't be consumed either. Or if you like them, dilute them down um, to sort of a third of the fruit juice and two thirds water. But again, just limit those as much as possible. Um, try and aim to keep your teas and coffees to two, maximum three a day, and have them well away from meal times. Um, so there are my seven reasons. Um, I hope that's been a useful one tonight. Rather than talking about foods, focusing more on hydration. Um, I'm just 
doing my newsletter at the moment and whilst I do these every week if you're not on my newsletter and you would like to be added then can you please message me with your email address to make sure you're on my newsletter so that you can get that I do that usually once a month occasionally I might send something else out more often but if you'd like my hints and tips and information that I send out by newsletter then please let me know your email address and if you've got any topics anything you'd like me to discuss in the coming weeks then again just put a comment below um, or separately message me and um, I'll make sure I cover that in the coming weeks so I hope you found that interesting um, I hope you have a good week thank goodness at the moment we've got this fabulous weather and the sunshine and the blue sky to just sort of lift our spirits at the moment so take care everybody and I hope to see you next week bye